हेलो एवरीवन लेट्स वेलकम अगेन इन एन केमिस्ट्री ऑडियो बुक और आज हम करने वाले हैं यूनिट फोर केमिकल काइनेटिक्स हमारे ट्वेल्थ क्लास के सिर्फ दो ही चैप्टर बचे हैं एक केमिकल काइनेटिक्स और दूसरा है अल्कोहल फिनॉल्स एंड ईथर्स सो वो वाला भी मैं कंप्लीट करके फिर इसकी एक कंबाइंड पूरे चैप्टर्स की ट्वेल्थ की ऑडियो बुक बना करके मैं अपलोड करूंगी जैसे कि मैंने ट्वेल्थ बायो की कर रखी है ऑलरेडी इलेवन ट्वेल्थ की सो so, बस जल्दी से दोनों चैप्टर कंप्लीट करते हैं तो चलिए टाइम बिना वेस्ट किए स्टार्ट करते हैं यूनिट फोर केमिकल काइनेटिक्स बच्चों ध्यान से ये सिर्फ एक ऑडियो बुक है नॉट द एक्सप्लेनेटरी वन तो बी स्पेसिफिक राइट यूनिट फोर केमिकल काइनेटिक्स केमिकल काइनेटिक्स हेल्प अस टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ केमिकल रिएक्शन अकर केमिस्ट्री बाय इट्स वेरी नेचर इज कंसर्न विद चेंज Substances with well-defined properties are converted by chemical reactions into other substances with different properties. For any chemical reaction, chemists try to find out a the feasibility of a chemical reaction which can be predicted by thermodynamics as you know that a reaction with delta G is less than 0 at constant temperature and pressure is feasible. b extent to which a reaction will proceed can be determined from chemical equilibrium. C is speed of a reaction that is time taken by a reaction to reach equilibrium along with feasibility and extent it is equally important to know the rate and the factors controlling the rate of chemical reaction for its complete understanding for example which parameters determine as to how rapidly food gets spoiled how to design a rapidly setting material for dental filling or what controls the rate at which fuel burns in an auto engine All these questions can be answered by the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of reaction rates and their mechanism called chemical kinetics. The word kinetics is derived from the Greek word kinesis meaning movement. Thermodynamics tells only about the feasibility of a reaction whereas chemical kinetics tells about the rate of a reaction. For example, thermodynamic data indicate that diamond shall convert to graphite. but in reality the conversion rate is so slow that the change is not perceptible at all therefore most people think that diamond is forever kinetic studies not only help us to determine the speed or rate of a chemical reaction but also describe the conditions by which the reaction rates can be altered the factors such as concentration temperature pressure and catalyst affect the rate of reaction at a macroscopic level We are interested in amounts reacted or formed and the rates of their consumption or formation. At the molecular level, the reaction mechanism involving orientation and energy of molecules undergoing collisions are discussed. In this unit we shall be dealing with the average and instantaneous rate of reaction and the factors affecting these some elementary ideas about the collision theory of reaction rates are also given. However in order to understand all these let us first learn about the reaction rate 4.1 rate of a chemical reaction some reactions such as ionic reactions occur very fast for example precipitation of silver chloride occurs instantaneously by mixing of aqueous solutions of silver nitrate and sodium chloride on the other hand some reactions are very slow for example rusting of iron in the presence of air and moisture Also there are reactions like conversion of cane sugar and hydrolysis of starch which proceed with a moderate speed. Can you think of a more example from each category? You must be knowing that speed of an automobile is expressed in terms of change in the position or distance covered by it in a certain period of time. Similarly the speed of a reaction or the rate of a reaction can be defined as the change in concentration of reactant or product in unit time to be more specific it can be expressed in terms of number 1 the rate of decrease in concentration of any one of the reactants or number 2 the rate of increase in concentration of any one of the products consider a hypothetical reaction assuming that the volume of the system remains constant reactant gives out product One mole of reactant R produces one mole of product P. If R1 and P1 are the concentration of R and P respectively at the time T1 and R2 and P2 are the concentration at time T2 then delta T is equals to 
टी टू माइनस टी वन डेल्टा आर इज इक्वल टू आर टू माइनस आर वन एंड डेल्टा पी इज इक्वल टू पी टू माइनस पी वन द स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट इन दशन आर यूज टू एक्सप्रेस मोलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रेट ऑफ डिस ऑफ आर इज इक्वल टू डिक्रीज इन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ आर अपॉन टाइम टेकन इज इक्वल टू माइनस डेल्टा आर अपॉन डेल्टा टी दैट इज इक्वेशन फोर पॉइंट वन रेट ऑफ अपियरेंस ऑफ पी इज इक्वल टू इंक्रीज इन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ पी अपॉन टाइम टेकन इज इक्वल टू पॉजिटिव डेल्टा पी अपॉन डेल्टा टी एंड दिस इज इक्वेशन फोर पॉइंट टू सिंस डेल्टा आर इज अगेटिव क्वांटिटी एज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट इज डिक्रीजिंग इट इज मल्टीप्लाइड विद माइनस वन टू मेक द रेट ऑफ रिएक्शन अ पॉजिटिव क्वांटिटी Equations 4.1 and 4.2 given above represent the average rate of reaction. Average rate depends upon the change in concentration of reactants or products and the time taken for that change to occur. Figure 4.1 here you can see that is instantaneous and average rate of reaction. Units of rate of a reaction. From equation 4.1 and 4.2, it is clear that units of rate are concentration per time. For example, if concentration is in mole per liter and time is in second, then the unit will be mole per liter second. And however, in gaseous reactions, when the concentration of gases is expressed in terms of their partial pressure, then the unit of the rate equation will be atmospheric per second. Here you can see the table 4.1 that is the average rates of hydrolysis of butyl chloride. It can be seen in table 4.1 that the average rate falls from 1.90 into 0 to the power minus 4 mole per liter per second to 0.4 and 10 to the power minus 4 mole per liter second. However, average rate cannot be used to predict the rate of reaction at a particular instant as it would be constant for the time interval for which it is calculated so to express the rate at particular moment of time we determine the instantaneous rate it is obtained when we consider the average rate at the smallest time interval say dt hence mathematically and infinitesimally small dt instantaneous rate is given by r average is equals to minus delta r upon delta t is equals to delta p upon delta t if we are considering delta t is equals to 0 then we are having r instantaneous is equals to minus dr upon dt is equals to dp upon dt that is equation 4.3 it can be determined graphically by drawing a tangent at time t on either of the curves of concentration of r and p versus time t and calculating its slope So in problem 4.1 r instantaneous at 600 seconds for example can be calculated by plotting concentration of butyl chloride as a function of time a tangent is drawn that touches the curve at t is equals to 600 second figure 4.2 this is the figure 4.2 figure 4.1 was initially it was now the next reaction we are having hg plus cl2 gives out hgcl2 where stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants and products are same then rate of the reaction is given as rate of reaction is equals to minus delta hg upon delta t is equals to minus delta cl2 upon delta t is equals to delta hg cl2 upon delta t that is rate of disappearance of any of the reactants is same as the rate of appearance of the products but in the following reaction two moles of hi decompose to produce one mole each of h2 and i2 2 hi is equals to h2 plus i2 for expressing the rate of such a reaction where stoichiometric coefficients of reactants or products are not equal to 1 rate of disappearance of any of the reactants or rate of appearance of products is divided by their respective stoichiometric coefficients since rate of consumption of hi is twice the rate of formation of h2 or i2 to make them equal the term delta hi is divided by 2 the rate of this reaction is given by here you can see the rate of reaction is equals to minus 1 upon 2 delta hi upon delta t is equals to delta h2 upon delta t is equals to delta i2 upon delta t here similarly for the reaction 5 br negative plus bro3 negative plus 6h positive gives out 3br2 plus 3h2o 
and here you can see the rate of reaction for this equation. For a gaseous reaction at constant temperature, concentration is directly proportional to the partial pressure of species and hence rate can also be expressed as rate of change in partial pressure of the reactant or the product. 4.2 Factors Influencing Rate of Reaction Rate of reaction depends upon the experimental conditions such as concentration of reactants, pressure in case of gases, temperature and catalyst. 4.2.1 Dependence of rate on react concentration The rate of chemical reaction at a given temperature may depend on the concentration of one or more reactants and products. The representation of rate of reaction in terms of concentration of the reactants is known as rate law. It is also called as rate equation or rate expression. 4.2.2 rate expression and rate constant. The results in table 4.1 clearly show that the rate of reaction decreases with the passage of time as the concentration of reactant decreased. Conversely, rates generally increase when reactant concentration increase. So, rate of a reaction depends upon the concentration of reactants. Consider a general reaction AA plus BB gives out CC plus DD. Where A, B, C and D in small letter are the stoichiometric coefficients of reactants and products. The rate expression for this reaction is rate is directly proportional to the A to the power X into B to the power Y and this is the equation 4.4. Where exponents X and Y may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients A and B of the reactants. Above equation can also be written as rate is equals to K A to the power X into b to the power y and minus dr upon dt is equals to k a to the power x b to the power y and this is reaction 4.4 b and above one is the reaction 4.4 a. This form of equation is known as differential rate equation where k is proportionality constant called rate constant. The equation like 4.4 which relates the rate of a reaction to concentration of reactants is called rate law or rate expression. Thus, rate law is the expression in which reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power which may or may not be same as the stoichiometric coefficient of the reacting species in a balanced chemical equation. For example, 2NO plus O2 gives out 2NO2. We can measure the rate of this reaction as a function of initial concentration either by keeping the concentration of one of the reactants constant and changing the concentration of the other reactant or by changing the concentration of both the reactants. The following results are obtained. Table 4.2 that is initial rate of formation of NO2. It is obvious. After looking at the results that when the concentration of NO is doubled, that of O2 is kept constant, then the initial rate increases by a factor of 4 from 0 0.096 to 0 0.384 mole per liter per second. This indicates that the rate depends upon the square of concentration of NO. When concentration of NO is kept constant and concentration of O2 is doubled, the rate also gets doubled indicating that rate depends on concentration of O2 to the first power. Hence the rate equation for this reaction will be rate is equals to K NO whole square into O2. The differential form of this rate expression is given as minus dr upon dt is equals to K NO whole square O2. Now we observe that for this reaction in the rate equation derived from the experimental data, the exponents of the concentration terms are the same as their stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Some other examples are given below. Here you can see the reactions. CHCl3 plus Cl2 gives out CCl4 plus HCl. And the next reaction is CH3COO C2H5 plus H2O gives out CH3COOH plus C2H5OH. And here you can see the rate of reaction for both equations. In these reactions, the exponents of the concentration terms are not the same as their stoichiometric coefficients. Thus, we can say that rate law for any reaction cannot be predicted by merely looking at the balanced chemical equation. That is theoretically but must be determined experimentally. 4.2.3 Order of a Reaction
In the rate equation 4.4, rate is equals to k a to the power x into b to the power y. x and y indicate how sensitive the rate is to change in concentration of a and b. Some of these exponents that is x plus y in 4.4 equation gives the overall order of the reaction whereas x and y represent the order with respect to the reactants A and B respectively. Hence, the sum of parts of the concentration of the reactants in the rate law expression is called the order of that chemical reaction. Order of reaction can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and even a fraction. A zero order reaction means that the rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of reactants. A balanced chemical equation never gives us a true picture of how a reaction takes place since rarely a reaction gets completed in one step. The reactions taking place in one step are called elementary reactions. When a sequence of elementary reactions called mechanism gives us the products, the reactions are called complex reactions. These may be consecutive reaction, for example oxidation of ethane to CO2 and H2O passes through a series of intermediate steps in which alcohol, aldehyde and acid are formed. Reverse reactions and side reactions, that is example, nitration of phenol yields, orthonitrophenol and paranitrophenol. Units of rate constant, for a general reaction AA plus BB gives out CC plus DD. Rate is equals to k a to the power x b to the power y where x plus y is equals to n that is the order of reaction. k is equals to rate upon a to the power x b to the power y. Now k is equals to concentration upon time into 1 upon to the concentration to the power n where a is equals to b. Taking SI unit of concentration mole per liter and time s, the units of k at different reaction order are listed in table 4.3. Here you can see for the zero order reaction. It is mole per liter per second, first order reaction per second, second order reaction that is liter per mole per second. 4.2.4 Molecularity of a reaction Another property of a reaction called molecularity helps in understanding its mechanism. The number of reacting species is, that is atoms, ions or molecules taking part in elementary reaction which must collide simultaneously in order to bring about a chemical reaction is called molecularity of a reaction. The reaction can be unimolecular when one reacting species is involved, for example decomposition of ammonium nitrite. Here you can see the reaction NH4NO2 gives out N2 plus 2H2O. Bimolecular reactions involve simultaneous collision between two species, for example dissociation of hydrogen iodide. 2HI plus H2 plus I2. Trimolecular or termolecular reactions involve simultaneous collisions between three reacting species. For example, 2NO plus O2 gives out 2NO2. The probability that more than three molecules can collide and react simultaneously is very small. Hence, reactions with the molecularity, three are very rare and slow to proceed. It is therefore evident that complex reactions involving more than three molecules in the stoichiometric equation must take place in more than one step. Reaction is KClO3 plus 6 FeSO4 plus 3H2SO4 gives out KCl plus 3Fe2SO4 whole thrice plus 3H2O. This reaction which apparently seems to be of 10th order is actually a second order reaction. This shows that this reaction takes place in several steps. Which step controls the rate of all overall reaction? The question can be answered if we go through the mechanism of reaction. For example, chances to win the relay race competition by a team depend upon the slowest person in the team. Similarly, the overall rate of the reaction is controlled by the slowest step in a reaction called the rate determining step. Consider the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide which is catalyzed by iodide ion in an alkaline medium. Here you can see this reaction, 2H2O2 gives out 2H2O plus O2 and the medium is alkaline. The rate equation for this reaction is found to be rate is equals to minus D H2O2 upon DT is equals to K H2O2 into I negative. This reaction is first order with respect to both H2O2 and I negative. 
and evidences suggested that this reaction takes place in two steps. Number one, H2O2 plus I negative gives out H2O plus IO negative, and number two, H2O2 plus IO negative gives out H2O plus I negative plus O2. Both the steps are biomolecular elementary reactions. A species is IO negative is called as an intermediate since it is formed during the course of the reaction but not in overall balanced equation. The first step being slow is the rate determining step. Thus, the rate of formation of intermediate will determine the rate of this reaction. Thus, from the discussion till now, we conclude the following. Number 1. Order of a reaction is an experimental quantity. It can be zero and even a fraction, but molecularity cannot be zero or non-integer. Number two, order is applicable to elementary as well as complex reactions, whereas molecularity is applicable only for elementary reactions. For a complex reaction, molecularity has no meaning. Number third, for complex reaction, order is given by the slowest step and molecularity of the slowest step is same as the order of the overall reaction. 4.3 Integrated Rate Equation We have already noted that concentration dependence of rate is called differential rate equation. It is not always convenient to determine the instantaneous rate as it is measured by the determination of slope of the tangent at point t in concentration versus time plot. This makes it difficult to determine the rate law and hence the order of reaction. In order to avoid this difficulty, we can integrate the differential rate equation to give a relation between directly measured experimental data, that is concentration at different times and rate constant. The integrated rate equations are different for the reactions of different reaction orders. We shall determine these equations only for zero and first order chemical reaction. 4.3.1 Zero Order Reaction Zero order reaction means that the rate of reaction is proportional to zero power of the concentration of reactants. Consider the reaction R gives out P. Rate is equals to minus dr upon dt is equals to kr to the power zero. As any quantity raised to power zero is unit, rate is equals to minus dr upon dt is equals to k into one. So dr is equals to minus k dt. Now we are integrating both sides. R is equals to minus kt plus i where i is the constant of integration. At t is equals to 0, the concentration of the reactant r is equals to r0, where r0 is initial concentration of reactant. Now the substituting the in equation 4.5, this is the equation 4.5, we are having as a result r0 is equals to i. Substituting the value of i in the equation 4.5, we are getting R is equals to minus KT plus R naught. Here you can see figure 4.3. Comparing 4.6 with equation of a straight line Y is equals to MX plus C. If we plot R against T, we set a, we get a straight line figure 4.3 with slope is equals to minus K and intercept equal to R naught. Now we are simplifying the equation that is K is equals to R naught minus R upon T. Zero order reactions are relatively uncommon but they occur under special conditions. Some enzyme catalyze reactions and reactions which occur on metal surfaces are few example of zero order reaction. The decomposition of gases ammonia on a hot platinum surface is zero order reaction at high pressure. Here you can see this reaction to NH3 at 1130 Kelvin in the presence of platinum catalyst gives out N2 plus 3H2. So rate is equals to k nh3 to the power 0 is equals to k. In this reaction, platinum metal act as a catalyst. At high pressure, the metal surface gets saturated with gas molecules. So a further change in reaction condition is unable to alter the amount of ammonia on the surface of the catalyst, making rate of the reaction independent of its concentration. The thermal decomposition of HI on gold surface is another example of zero order reaction.